While the world of Warcraft is full of classic fantasy imagery, it has never been afraid to steer into the creepier parts of the genre. However, in a world full of the Scourge and the Forsaken, and aliens and demons, my favorite spooky area has to be Duskwood. A large part of this rests on the scary stories told within its misty trees, including the absolute classic, The Legend of Stalvin. This questline has been in the game since vanilla, and saw a major revamp that simplified it after the Cataclysm, yet its horrifying subject matter and storyline that sent players on borderline investigative journalism has made it amongst the World of Warcraft's most memorable. So today, let's take a walk in those dark woods and discover the legend of Stalvin. Before we get started, I would like to kindly ask you to like this video if you enjoy it, and to subscribe for more in the future. You can also ring the bell if you want to help YouTube see my content within its algorithm. I have a ton more videos covering the storytelling, world building, and easter eggs of your favorite fantasy, science fiction, and superhero franchises on the way, and you don't want to miss any of that. Many, many moons ago, what feels like an age long past. My journeys brought me into the shadowed canopy of Duskwood. This was a place that seemed forsaken by the light, abandoned so that no sun could reach the forest floor. I made my way into the largest settlement in the area, the town of Darkshire, and asked around to see if any adventuring needed doing. Eventually I was pointed in the direction of Madame Eva, and upon entering her home, I overhear her speak of dark premonitions she's felt in the night. Okay. That's ominous. Let's ask her what exactly is going on. She tells me, Last night, a horrible disturbance rippled through my veins. I sensed that my granddaughter, Alyssa, was in great danger. I consulted the cards, and death stared up at me from the table. After taking a long journey through a dark trance, I was able to uncover a clue to this terrifying mystery. A name came to me, the name of Stalvin. Seek out the clerk in the town hall and see if you can find out more about this character. I fear for us all. That's more than a little concerning, so I agreed to take Madame Eva's quest, making my way to the Darkshire town hall to see Clerk Daltrey and what he has to say about the matter. Ah, so Madame Eva sent you, he says, though he seems a bit confused as to the reason for the visit. Stalvin, huh? Let me check the town registry. Stalvin, Stalvin. Let's see. Ah, here we go. I have a record of Mr. Stalvin Mistmantle. The last recorded address is in the Moonbrook Schoolhouse. My, talk about outdated. Do me a favor, will you, friend? If you happen to go out to Moonbrook, let me know if you get any update on this fellow. I like to keep the records clean. The Moonbrook Schoolhouse? All the way in Westfall? This case is getting stranger by the minute. Moonbrook has been abandoned and overrun with defias bandits for, well, years at this point. Daltrey's right. We should go check this out. Fortunately, my journeys had already taken me to Westfall before, so returning there should be at least partially abridged by a griffin ride. I set out from Sentinel Hill and trekked towards the village, which has seen better days, sneaking past cutthroats and highwaymen into its long, dilapidated schoolhouse. Odd, in a settlement where every square inch seems to be overrun by defias bandits, the schoolhouse is conspicuously empty. There wasn't a lot left in the ruined structure aside from the remnants of shattered furniture and broken dreams. However, Near the front of the classroom, I did notice a wooden footlocker. The chest was out of place in the room, so I approached and scrounged around inside, finding some bits of parchment within. It's a dusty, unsent letter, which reads, To the Honorable Master Krillian. My former master, I write you so that you may know what your apprentice has been doing of late. Paying heed to your advice, I sought to build my knowledge and wisdom through travel outside the gates of our beloved Stormwind. My journeys took me to many places, but I have decided to take up residence here in the lovely town of Moonbrook. The surrounding fields of Westfall are most beautiful as the harvest approaches. Within just a few days, I found myself tutoring the local children from the nearby farmlands. The lessons went so well that the town mayor commissioned me to run a school, and construction has begun on a brand new schoolhouse. From Silver Pine to Stormwind, and now Moonbrook, 
Who would have guessed I would see so much of Azeroth? Warm regards, Stalvin Mistmantle. Well, there's our man. I should get back to Darkshire and show Clerk Daughtry this. Wait, is, is that a ghost? My eyes don't deceive me. A ghost appears and attacks me, instructing me to leave the past in the past. Before I can strike her down, she even curses me. How strange that a ghost would attack me for looking into this. This old ruin is unsettling me now, so I leave, returning to Clerk Daltrey in Darkshire. He says, Ah, I remember you. You're the one asking about that Stalvin fellow. Did you ever find what you were looking for? I hand over the letter. Interesting. So the chap did spend some time in Moonbrook after all. It is rather odd the letter never got delivered. Nonetheless, I shall update the registry. Oh my, must have missed this the first time. In the registry, right beneath the first address for Stalvin, there's another one listed, only partially scratched out. Looks like he was headed to the Lion's Pride Inn over in Goldshire. Might want to check there. This is turning into quite the errand, but I'm invested now. We have a mystery to solve. So I make my way back to Elwyn, steering my horse through the rain and stabling them outside the Lion's Pride Inn. Within, I head to the bar near the kitchens, where the familiar face of Innkeeper Farley waits for me. He says, Stalvin? Sure, sounds familiar. The name Stalvin rings a bell. I remember now. Many years back, on a stormy night, a messenger came in, seeking refuge for the night. Near the stroke of midnight, the man ran down the stairs, screaming, his face pale with fear. Still wearing his bedclothes, disappeared into the downpour. In his haste, he forgot his letters in the chest upstairs. He never returned for them. One remains from that Stalvin fella, intended for the canal district in Stormwind. Help yourself to it. Oh, how mysterious, and more than a little frightening. Nodding my appreciation to the innkeeper, I head upstairs and into the building's master bedroom. Sure enough, a chest waits for me there, and within is an undelivered letter. It reads, Dear noble sir, word of your need for a tutor for your children has traveled to me here in Goldshire, where I take up temporary residence in the Lion's Pride Inn. Due to the unfortunate state of events in the region, I was forced to abandon my post as headmaster of the Moonbrook Schoolhouse. Please accept my application to serve as tutor for your offspring. Headmaster Krillian of the Academy can speak to you of my abilities if necessary. I shall travel to meet you in person when the winter rains subside and the roads are suitable for travel once more. Until then, Stalvin Mistmantle of Silverpine. So, a uh, teacher brought south before the Scourge invaded, forced from his new home in Moonbrook by the Defias, and now looking for work from the nobles of Stormwind. This mystery keeps getting more and more intriguing, but why is there so much darkness surrounding this story? I make for Stormwind once more, searching the capital's expansive canal district and asking around for anyone who's heard of this Stalvin Mistmantle character. Eventually, I find one caretaker Folsom, working with several crates and barrels. As I approach and ask about the letter, he says, What have you got there? Let me take a look at that. You've got some nerve bringing this here. My father was the caretaker for the estate long before I was. He had to mop up the blood after the massacre, but that's neither here nor there. The last funds of the Flint Ridge Trust have dried up, and the last of the family's possessions are headed for auction. Blame the tax vultures. I guess if you're really itching to learn more, you're free to look through this junk. Who knows what you might find? Mop up the blo- Massacre? Oh. Oh dear, so that's where this is headed. Part of me wants to bolt and run as far away from this as possible, but... Well, my curiosity has led me this far. I rifle through the crates and boxes, looking for anything useful, eventually coming across a page torn from an old journal. Not sure why it wasn't burned or tossed out, but it reads, Giles, the boy, seems a bit rambunctious and will be a challenge to educate. However, the elder daughter, Tiloa, seems exceptionally smart. I couldn't help but notice her captivating beauty as well. She is on the cusp of womanhood now. Supposedly the Lord has arranged her marriage for next year, but I digress. 
This week I will accompany the family to their summer cottage near the Eastvale logging camp in Elwyn, close to the Red Ridge Mountains. I hope to write more while there. Light, this really is sending us everywhere, isn't it? Well, I suppose we should head over to... Wait, another ghost? Right here in the streets of Stormwind, I had to battle off another ghost, who once again wails that I should let this matter rest. But I think not. I need to know what happened here. I bid farewell to the caretaker and ride out of the city, galloping through the thicket of the Elwyn Forest. With the Red Ridge Mountains in the distance, I reached the Eastvale logging camp, making my way to the cottage at its outskirts. There I discover old Marshall Haggard, who has retired to the homestead. In a tired voice, he greets me. What have you got there? I cannot see. My eyesight is very bad. Put it in my hands. I can barely make out those letters, but that writing style reminds me of something I once saw before my vision became so poor. There was a bundle of parchments in the chest upstairs when I moved into this place. I looked at them once when I first arrived, but I gave up once the fog hazed over my peepers. Do an old, nearly blind man a favor and check the chest upstairs for anything that might help you in your quest to discover more about this Stalvin character. I'm pretty sure there's a faded journal page that might be of interest to you. Bring it to me and I'll help you in any way I can. I make my way into his home, up the stairs and into the frighteningly quiet master bedroom. It feels as if all life has abandoned this place books and paintings still against the chilly air. I find the chest Haggard spoke of, reaching in and finding an old, faded journal page. This most strange and uncomfortable feeling. Never have I felt the way I did today. Whilst assisting Giles with his history lesson, Taloa was outside tending to the flower garden. After a few minutes, she came inside and placed a scarlet begonia in the palm of my hand and smiled at me in such a way that my heart felt as though it was trembling within my chest. Oh. Oh no. I'm piecing together what's happened here. Stalvin saw the innocent friendship of this girl, this Taloa, and thought it some sign of affectionate love. I have a bad feeling about this entire situation. And again, a forlorn spirit appears and begs me to stop looking into this matter. As I fight to escape, I realize that this must be the ghost of Taloa, who has met some horrible end at an age far too young. Is she hoping to save me from a similar fate? No. I will see this through and make sure it's settled once and for all. Outside, I approach Haggard with what I've found. Did you find that page I mentioned? You found it! I know of someone who might be able to assist you. Back when I was leading the Stormwind Guard, we used to get drinks at the Scarlet Raven Tavern in Darkshire. The innkeeper there, Smits, was quite an expert on the local law. Show him this page and see what he has to say about it. I agree and bid the old man a good day, riding through Red Ridge and back into Duskwood. I search for Innkeeper Smits within the Scarlet Raven Tavern, telling him that Haggard pointed me his way. Marshal Haggard sent you? Why didn't you say so? Ah, good old Haggard. Poor chap is going to be completely blind before long. Anyway, let me see what you got there. By the light, you bet I recognize that handwriting. I followed the legend of that Stalvin character for years. When those visiting nobles were slaughtered a few years back, I went with Haggard to investigate. I found these muddy pages, but you were never able to link the handwriting to that crazy man in the woods. Your trail of evidence proves his guilt. Take this to Commander Ebonlock immediately and fill her in with what you've discovered. Wait, Stalvin's never been brought to justice? Yeah, this needs to be dealt with immediately. On the way out to Commander Ebonlock, however, I do sneak a peek at the muddy pages Smith's handed over. Most certain that she shares the same feelings for me now. She even placed her hand on mine this morning. When she smiles, her eyes light up like glimmering diamonds. Unspoken words pass between us. I can feel her in my pounding heart and heated veins. Such anger and fury the likes of which I never knew existed. How dare she? 
as I was instructing Giles in the meaning of numbers, Taloa appears before me with a suitor, holding hands in public nonetheless. What an uncouth young man. Rather than introduce me properly, Taloa simply said, Oh, that's just my tutor, Uncle Stalvin. He's a nice old man. Old. At that word, my cheeks flushed with heat. I am but a few years older, and yet she betrays me. That poor girl. Let's give her some peace. I approach Commander Ebonlock with the results of my investigation. This better be good, adventurer. Let me see what you have and tell me your tale, but by the light be quick about it. Darkshire's defense is my number one priority. I have not the time to squander on dead in leads. My, you have proved yourself quite the detective. I've had my eye on that creep Stalvin for quite some time, but if this page was written by the same hand, it proves his guilt beyond a shadow of a doubt. As we leaf through the muddy journal pages, Evan Locks finds another one, a bloodstained page. We exchange heavy, saddened glances as we read over the words. Downward spiral of despair. First she mocks me, and now she is engaged. The ungracious charlatan was pretending to love when truly she desired to hurt me all along. A black void lurks within me now, and it grows with each waking moment. The blood I shall spill pales in comparison to the tears I have shed. We talked to Clerk Daughtry to confirm our suspicions, comparing the handwriting of the pages to Stalvin's scribblings in the registry. I want to bring this madman to justice, but you should always be sure before exacting such punishment. When Daughtry confirms they match, Ebonlock tasks me with bringing Stalvin's reign of horror to an end before he can take Alyssa Eva's life the same way he took Taloa's. Stalvin Mistmantle led a life of depravity. Innocent victims died by his hand. Undoubtedly, he is guilty of countless crimes. Now the lunatic threatens Darkshire. The Light only knows what sordid acts he is plotting. Travel to his cottage just north of town and execute Stalvin once and for all. I nod and travel north along Darkshire's roads. A short ride out of town, a broken path juts off to the right leading to a darkening tree line. I see shapes moving back there, inhuman and lumbering. I steel myself for what I must do, and thankfully, I know how to move unseen within the shadows. I sneak back, past the shambling risen corpses here at Mistmantle Manor, until I finally see the man himself, or what's left of him. Stalvin's body now reflects his twisted soul. His flesh is rotting, mouth literally fallen from his walking cadaver, eyes glowing with the hatred that burned his heart and led him to kill an innocent family. He cannot be allowed to remain alive, if that's what you want to call this state, so I jump from the shadows and attack. Thankfully, after exchanging a few blows, my dagger strikes true and calls the monstrous man. I pry the mismantle ring from his finger and leave his body where it fell. The vultures can have it for all I care, though I imagine someone from Darkshire will be along to bury it. Sadly, this would not be the last we hear of Stalvin Mistmantle. Years and years later, after the cataclysm rocked Azeroth's every shore, another adventurer travels into Duskwood. Here, at a house at the top of Darkshire, we find Tobias Mistmantle, eyes downcast as he stares into the fire. I ask him what's wrong, and he says, I'm here because I received a letter from my brother Stalvin, who I haven't seen in years. On arriving here, I was told he was dead. The entire town refuses to offer any explanation. Any mention of his name is met with terror and suspicion, as if I didn't get enough of that myself. I'm afraid of what will happen if my anger and frustration grows any further. I beg you, help me get to the bottom of this. Implore Cluck Daltry for any information that he may have on my brother. Well, that's understandable. The man is twice dead already, after all. But I agree, and head to Daltry. The clerk seems rather cagey about the entire situation, complaining that outsiders always ask about Stalvin, and that the locals know better than to even think about him. He discourages us from looking too far into it, and tells us that we'd have difficulty even if we wanted to, 
Oregon broke into the town hall recently and stole several of their records, including all their information about Stalvin. Still, I cannot let the mystery rest, and I travel to several Worgen dens and open fields, abandoned farmsteads, and even a cave system to collect Autry's missing records. They each appear to be journal pages, collected by an adventurer years before, to seal Stalvin's fate. Daltry thanks me for the help, and reluctantly hands over the final blood-stained page of Miss Mantle's journal to return to his brother. Tobias is grateful, saying, You're back. Did you find anything about my brother? I can't thank you enough. I'd hoped for this to be a joyous reunion, but the more I learn, the less glad I am to have asked. But I must know. This can't be. My brother was strong-willed, but such vileness, such sickness and violent, bloody evil. Tobias brings a hand to his face, averting his gaze. I must have answers. I need to know how I got that letter. I need to know if Stalvin really did this. I need to know why. Take my ring. Bring it to Madame Eva. That woman is a follower of old arts and makes no secret of it. Call it madness... I'll try anything at this point. I nod to the man, leaving him to gather his thoughts about the dark deeds his brother committed. I feel for Tobias. What a horrible fate to have befallen his kin and his victims. I walk down the hill to Madame Eva, who looks to me. What dark whispers guide you to my door? How interesting. It's been quite a while since I've seen such a ring. I'm afraid I cannot give Tobias the answers he seeks, but I can help you find the only person who can. Stalvin Mist Mantle. Take the ring into the woods to the east, to Mana Mist Mantle, where Stalvin's body was buried. Enter and hold the ring before you. Let the waning moon pour its light through the ring, and the spirits will answer your call. Take heed. The questions of the living can offer more comfort than the answers of the dead. Wait, Stalvin's still alive? Somehow? Whoever struck him down last time should have burned his corpse. I ride north of town, again to the ghoul-infested ruins of Manor Mistmantle. I burn a path into the building, holding the Mistmantle family ring and following Madame Eva's instructions. Stalvin's body rises from the grave. My ring. Who holds my family ring? Taloa, is that you? Thankfully it's not, but before I can say anything, Tobias stalks in, having followed me to the manor. Brother. Tobias. Tell me it's not true, brother. Tell me you didn't die a murderer. <laughs> Stalvin only laughs. It's all true, brother. Every word. You doubted it. But why? How could you? You know why. Surely you felt anger. Anger so foul and vicious that it makes you want to tear someone to shreds. Aren't you feeling it now? No. No. Stop it. The turn Tobias rushes his brother's shambling corpse, and the two begin slashing at each other. The pair seem evenly matched, so I'll have to turn the tide and help end Stalvin's rampage once and for all. The battle is somewhat short but intense nonetheless. Claws rip, daggers shear, and my magic freezes and burns dead flesh until eventually Stalvin falls. You see, brother, we're not so different. No. Surely overcome with a horrible sadness, Tobias rushes back to Darkshire. I should go see him now that this awful business has been put to rest. I'd set this whole house ablaze if I weren't afraid it would catch the whole forest afire. Though, as I left, I did notice a beautiful flower in the manor's garden. I recognized the species as the Tear of Taloa. Perhaps the spirit of the girl Stalvin murdered will endure in some way. I hope she has found peace. Some time later, I approach Tobias for a final time. Master Harris may have been right. It would have been better to leave the past behind. I've got a new life now. Whether it's that of a monster or a man is up to me. 
As for you, I can't thank you enough for your assistance, regardless of the outcome. Please, take this with my thanks. If you hadn't guessed, the storyline for The Legend of Stalvin was heavily inspired by the novel Lolita by Vladimir Nabokov, which had many similar ideas and themes. And while The Legend of Stalvin was one of the creepiest quests in the world of Warcraft, this wasn't the extent of Stalvin's touch upon the game. This story left an impression with a lot of players, either through the sheer horror of the actions described within it, or the memorable journey across the Kingdom of Stormwind it led classic adventurers on. So, Blizzard's designers included several nods to the murderer throughout Azeroth. Stalvin's Reaper, the one-handed axe that the madman presumably used during his murder spree, can drop from various creatures throughout Duskwood. It's common consensus that the axe was originally going to be a random drop from Stalvin himself, but Blizzard didn't want campers to interfere with questing players by trying to farm the drop. In Dalaran, one can find Stalvin's copper coin in the fountains, with an inscription reading, You mages refuse to provide me that which hastens the inevitable fate of two people in love, and only one is too naive to see it. I wish you all ruin. Man, Stalvin was not a good guy. Looking for a love potion to enchant this poor girl, god that's disgusting. Finally, a still living, human Stalvin can be found at South Shore in the old Hillsbrad foothills within the Caverns of Time, sleeping within the inn before he travels to Stormwind. Sadly, this is not his time to die, so we can't kill him here and end his reign of terror before it begins. There is a ton of creepy stuff within the world of Warcraft. The lore of the undead in general is fairly spine-chilling, so if you're interested in that, go check out my video talking about why the Forsaken joined the Horde, or you can go watch my video covering the secrets and easter eggs within Tyrus Fall Glades. What did you think of The Legend of Stalvin? Let me know down in the comments below, and please remember to like this video if you enjoyed it and subscribe for more in the future. If you want to go above and beyond and actually help me get noticed by YouTube's algorithm, you can also ring the bell so you know every time a video goes up. As always, thank you so much for watching, and until next time.